In this example, we want to use the Chinese remainder theorem to solve this system of linear congruences. So in the last exercise before this example, we worked out a formula using the Chinese remainder theorem um, to write down the solution of this. So let's first identify the pieces. We have these two numbers here, the 3 and the 4. These are a1 is 3, and a2 is equal to 4. And these two numbers given to us are n1 and n2. Um, n1 is equal to 7, n2 is equal to 12. And in the Chinese remainder theorem, our solution is that x is congruent to a1 times n2 times a number y1 plus a2 times n1 times a number y2. So I'm going to write blank spots here for y1 and y2. And then um, there's kind of a picture you can draw here to, to describe this relationship. By the way, this is congruent to this modulo, the product of these two. So modulo n1 times n2. In this case, that number will be 84, 7 times 12. But the solution, if you, if you make a table like this, the solution to, the, um, to a system of two linear congruences by the Chinese remainder theorem is you just kind of do like a zigzag product. Multiply these numbers together. You multiply these numbers together. And then you add them up and take the modulo um, of the product of the two moduli that you started with. OK, so we need to uh, compute y1 and y2 before this makes any sense. We can multiply 3 times 12, but the question is what's y1, what's y2? And recall that the y1 and the y2 are the inverses of these things uh, with respect to the other one. So um, the idea here is that y1 times n1 should be congruent to 1 mod n1. Now what is this capital n1? Well, this is the, this is the notation of the general Chinese remainder theorem, and when there's only two equations, capital N1 is lowercase n2. All right, and similarly, y2 times n2, capital N2, should be congruent to 1 mod little n2. Notice that when you write it this way, all the subscripts are the same, so that's a good way to remember it, but then when you have, um, when you have just two equations, these capital N's are, are the opposite lowercase n. So we need to compute these two things. n1 and n2 again are 7 and 12. So one way to compute these, these are the inverses, right? The, the y's are the inverses. And one way to compute these inverses is by using Bezu's theorem. So remember the Bezu coefficients say that if this, if these two numbers are uh, relatively prime, then there are unique integers that we can find to add these up to get the 1. So Bezu's theorem is essentially an application of the division algorithm, and it says that we should break down 7 and 12 in terms of the division algorithm. So let's do it. Let's do 7 into 12. That goes in once. Remainder of 5. We do 5 into 7. It goes in once. Remainder is 2. 2 into 5 goes in twice. Remainder is 1. And so at this point, we can start to build, we can start to apply Bezu's theorem to find the inverses. So this, this here says that 1, I'm going to write this down over here, 1 is equal to, sorry, um, this is correct, but yeah, I'll write it this way. So 1 is equal to 5 minus 2 times 2. Okay, so really what the division algorithm says is that 5 is equal to 2 times 2 plus 1. Right? So then I'm going to go to 2. This one here, the, ne the next one, let's change the color. So the next equation here says that 2 is equal to 7 minus 5 times 1. Okay, just same deal here. And then we can go to this last one. This one says that the remainder 5 is equal to 12 minus 7 times 1. Okay, so to solve for the Bezu coefficients, we need to find a linear combination of 7 and 12 that equals to 1. So this one right here is what we want to solve for. What we do is we take the equations working our way down this list. So this equation for 2, which involves a 7 and a 5, plug it in for this 2 here. And then after that's done, we repeat the same process. And now this equation will just have 5s and 7s. We take the 5 from this one, um, the 5, 
and its equation here, which is 12s and 7s, and it'll go in for all the 5s up here. Okay, and so let's do it. We get then that 1, so I'm going to write, I'll just draw a little vertical line here to separate my work. So we, hear, we have now that 1 is equal to 5 minus 2 times 7 minus 5 times 1. And so this says 1 is equal to 5 minus 2 times 7 uh, plus 2 times 5. And of course these two 5s can get grouped together. So now we have 1 is equal to 3 times 5 minus 2 times 7. That's a typo here. This was a 7. All right, and then we take our equation for 5, and that goes in for this 5 right here. Okay, so this equation goes in for this 5. We've already got our 7, so we just need to get 12 in the mix, and there's going to be more 7s here. So plugging that in, we have now 1 equals 3 times 12 minus 1 times 7 minus 2 times 7. And just regrouping, we have 3 times 12. Uh, minus 3 times 7 minus 2 times 7 or 1 equals 3 times 12 minus 5 times 7. All right, so this is this is our linear combination in Bezu's theorem. And what this tells us, remember, so I'll write it up here, 1 equals 3 times 12 minus 5 times 7. So this tells us that the inverse so 3 is the inverse of 12 mod 7. All right, so this tells us that 3 times 12 is congruent to 1 mod 7. And remember, now if we look at this, 12 is the n2, and so this means that 3 is our y1. So this 3 right here, this is our y1. Okay, just by Bezu's theorem. This one also says then that negative um, 5 times 7 is congruent to 1 mod 12, and so that tells us that negative 5, negative 5 here, this is the inverse of 7 mod 12. Inverse of 7 mod 12, that means it's y2, so that's negative 5. That's negative 5 mod 12, it could also be written as positive 7 then, okay? Could be positive 7. But now we just, once we have these numbers, this is the kind of the hardest part of this, is computing these two numbers. That was all done over here with Bezu's theorem. Now we just plug in. So our x is going to be congruent to 3 times 12 times 3 plus 4 times 7 times negative 5. And that's all reduced modulo. The product of these two is 84. So mod 84. And a little bit of math here. This becomes 9 times 12. So that's, uh, I believe, 108. Uh, this is then going to be minus 30 time, 35 times 4 is 140. All right, 35 times 4, 140. This is all reduced mod 84. And so x is congruent to negative 32 mod 84. But if we want to get this to be a positive modulus, then x is congruent to um, 52, right? 84 minus 32 is 52 mod 84. And this is the same solution that we got um, by working this out just by substitutions and using the division algorithm directly. But this is the solution from the Chinese remainder theorem um, with an application of Bezu's theorem to find the inverses that are required by the theorem. All right, so you should have already checked that this is the answer because this is an example that we've done another way. But if you haven't, make sure that, that you check that 52 is actually congruent to both 3 mod 7 and 4 mod 12.